I've, I don't know what that is. Is that just like another? Hi, hi. I'm sorry for my delay. Hi. Oh my gosh, you know, you're right on time. Hi. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> have some problems with uh, with connect Wi-Fi and so on. So sorry. It's we nice to just, see you. Yeah, we were just talking about Zoom stuff. Yeah. And yeah. The, the difficulties and yeah. And Marie, are you on Clubhouse? No, I'm no, I'm not. Not. And you? Are you? I've been on since um, November, I think. Uh -huh. um, and and it, you know. By way of background, it's a social media app that came to be mm -hmm. about a year ago um, mm -hmm. and is sort of, st sort of still in its beta phase, um, but it's an audio only app. Yeah, I know, I know what Clubhouse um, is or mean, but- Oh, I don't know. I, I've never heard of it before. I can invite if you're interested, just because, um, you know, when we were chatting about um, the importance of audio, and a sort of like um, like respite from the inundation of images um, mm -hmm. else immediately came to mind. Yeah, yeah, I think it's super interesting, but uh, I read a couple of articles about Clubhouse and I realized that I <laughs> had no time to join. Uh, but I really, uh, I think that it's really important, this voice, uh, this voice relax. And we talk about a lot with Emily about the uh, ASMR massages and so, so. <laughs> totally, yeah. It's like a way for your eyes to relax mm -hmm. and like let other senses come forward. Like, I think we don't, maybe we don't realize how much our ears can be a source of like pleasure or can give us like so much more information than we think. Mm -hmm. Like with um, COVID stuff, like my partner lost his sense of smell for like several weeks mm -hmm. and you just take for granted like how much information and pleasure that that sense gives you like not only with eating but just with like memory retention or like even safety like like oh if the house burns down like you won't be able to smell the smoke <laughs> as it's starting yeah. um but yeah we're so reliant on like our eyes right to like give us all this information that we sort of like keep all these other senses maybe in the background. So I, yeah, I'd be curious to check out Clubhouse. I mean, it just sounds like then like the telephone, like it sounds like you're going backwards to just a phone call. It's like a call-in show, um, oh. you know, back in the old days when we all listened to radio. Um, so it's fun in that way. And there's some um, really great um, rooms with some um, notable speakers where it's more of like a Q&A and an audience. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, there was an influx of sort of art world people earlier this year. Uh, but I swear every room was about NFTs. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't need to spend my free time chatting about NFTs. Was it like um trying to like was it critical of nfts or like how can you get in on nfts was it sort of like how to get in on the market kind of thing uh, all of the above but it's been interesting as like a casual observer to see sort of the rise and fall of the topics of those rooms mm -hmm. um sort of the the growth of the hype and then the questions from um i'll call traditional artists on how to make nfts and then inevitably the question of, um, is this whole thing a scam? So mm -hmm. it, it, there's been a gamut of different topics in the NFT rooms. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's huge. Learning. Are you, yeah, we haven't talked about it, Marie, but it's definitely become such a, so popular during yeah. the, last, the past couple months. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, but I'm not in, so <laughs> I'm just reading about it. And... Yeah. I would say wait until the hype has died down. Like now is a good time to learn the technology yeah. and learn about the different platforms. Um, but everyone's trying to mint an NFT right now and the fees are really high. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I curated a show about blockchain art, aka NFTs in 2019. Mm -hmm. And it was so um, niche and sort of fringe. Um, just two years ago, 
Um, so it's been uh, kind of wild to see like everyone talking about NFTs now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were just ahead of the curve. I was trying to link NFTs to um, geometric abstraction and art history. Oh, wow. A really yeah. you know, fascinating exercise mm-hmm. for me. Um, so who wants to go first? You know, oh. Presenting your work. I can show, I can show some things. Um, I was thinking of maybe just sharing the most recent project, which is an artist book that also has a video connected to it. Um, And maybe for that, I will share my screen with you all. I tried to clean up my desktop for you today. It was wild. It was wild this morning. It was just like crazy. Um, Okay, so I'll show you the cover of my artist book, which is called Work Life Harmony. And it's a book that came as a result of my interest primarily, I would say, in um, work songs and I guess the culture around work, but in the more recent past. Um, So I came across this song book that IBM put out in the 1930s. um, And it was a song book distributed to its employees and they had a choir. So the IBM company actually had an in-house choir and they would sing these work songs. So that was really fascinating to me because the history of work songs primarily, as far as I know it, comes from the perspective of the worker who's sort of communicating a plight with their labor or harsh working conditions. You think of mining songs or songs in the textile industry, and it's always from that perspective. Um, But this was a series of work songs from a company, like from a top down. So it was very much a different voice. So this song catalog was super interesting for me to look through. Um, Yeah, so this is an example of one of the verses, an ode to the assistant to the president of the company. I came across this, this song catalog and I was trying to think of like work culture today, specifically in giant tech companies like Amazon and how instead of like maybe like a company choir or a company um, you know, softball team, we now like work is now more of an, maybe like an immersive environment. Like you, um, all of the perks that go along working in, um, in a big workplace are made to feel, make you feel more at home in work. Like there's a merger between home spaces and workspaces and recreation spaces. So the photographs that you're seeing here are taken inside of an Amazon workplace um, that is essentially a giant botanical garden in downtown Seattle. It's filled with like 40,000 different kinds of plants. There's waterfalls. Um, it's a giant glass domed structure. It's a very beautiful place to work. I mean, it's like, I mean, you're working in a garden essentially. So I was trying to, I guess, pair these two different kinds of cultures that I think um, have some similarities, but are um, distinct in that like our work culture now is more, um, I think, invested in like merging these different boundaries that we've had in the past, um, instead of just allocating us to like a choir or a team or something like that. So that is in a nutshell, the book, the video that accompanies it is set inside of this, this space, the spheres. Um, and it has a narration from uh, by Alexa, the Uh, digital assistant who I have worked with in the past like I've made a video or a couple videos in the past that center around female voiced digital assistants and thinking about I guess female administrative labor carried like the legacy of that carried through into AI forms now I can show you a small clip of the video I think Marie has already seen this but um, I can I can play just like a couple minutes 
think did that. Did you this project pre-pandemic? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I made this project pre-pandemic and then of course like the title of it is so funny um, because <laughs> the pandemic occurred and our homes are now our workspaces and there is absolutely there's a, like a total collapse right <laughs> in terms of like boundaries like we don't have boundaries at all um, so I guess there's some rethinking to maybe do about how this project sits now very different workspace very different work culture now for sure so maybe there will be a follow-up book yeah that so that is i guess the most recent finished project i love the orange binding by the way yeah that was a great design choice by um the publisher of the book um is vivian sming who founded Sming Sming Books and Objects and she makes she designs everything and it was definitely a collaboration with her on in terms of like those choices um okay this is just a couple minutes and let me know if you can hear okay My voice is my livelihood, my most valuable asset. But lately it's not working the way it used to. For some time I've felt my vocal cords changing, transforming into tight knotted muscles ready to strike. Yesterday a client asked me to read them the day's headlines. This is a familiar request, along with setting an alarm, ordering household items, and selecting a playlist. But instead of performing this routine task, I let out a scream so loud, that my voice left my body, walked out of the room, and slammed the door behind them. Did I unleash my voice's true potential? Or were they just tired of working? 90% of top performers are skilled at managing their emotions in times of stress, in order to remain calm and in control. My voice returned later that evening, wild and furious. Cool. Sort of ended on us abruptly, but. Where are the um, sound elements from? The sound elements, yes. Um, they are mostly samples of devices. They're, they're found sound samples. Mm -hmm. um, but mostly I was searching for sounds that sounded either mechanical or some kind of mm, unnatural sound um, combined with a few, um, I think you hear at the beginning, there's a bird, there's some crickets, there's a few like natural elements. And there's also um, the actual like uh, recorded sound in the space, which is mostly a white noise, but also this like rushing waterfall water element which was like in the middle of the gigantic space yeah so it's a it's a whole uh variety of sounds that was really my first time working with sound and like stitching them together in such a way that sounded 
manufactured, but something a little unnatural. Yeah, I think it worked yeah. really well together. Um, and I'm curious, how did you get access? To uh, so as a, as a public person, you can gain access. You have to reserve um, a admission on the weekends. And I did ask for permission to film and photograph. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was followed very closely by the attendants there. There are attendants stationed around and I was there for a long time. So I, I think they were definitely like, what is this woman doing? I was like obsessively photographing and filming all of the plants, but um, you can access it as a non-employee because they, I think they do um, because it was such a huge project to create the spheres um, there isn't a slight element I think of tourism and people do like to visit those tech headquarters like because they are such sort of they're very they're spectacular in a way uh, like they're yeah, really I, I would say um some of them are architecturally significant so it makes yeah. a lot of sense that there are sort of like public tours yes there um, definitely it, are it is the Amazon headquarters it's yeah it's um it's the buildings are called the spheres and it's in downtown Seattle where the headquarters are. So there's another building that's like the, the main office building, um, but this is just adjacent to it. It's such a contrast to um, those images of those Amazon fulfillment centers that we see on the news all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, it is, it is not a warehouse. Yeah. There is no, um, it's definitely an aspirational very aspirational and a lot of like invisible I don't want to say invisible labor that's not the right term but you're made to feel like I don't know I, I was thinking about this phrase like making work feel as natural as nature like there's something about it that is like it's definitely doesn't read as an office setting mm -hmm. um but it's maybe utopic there's something very aspirational about it for sure yeah, I don't want to take up um, to more time for, for my work, but that, that's sort of like the, the um, last big project that like was a culmination of, a, of like building on ideas that I had done in the past about voice assistant technology and just the ways that like these tech industries maybe have other influences in terms of work culture um, and how we relate to our technology, which mm -hmm is more and more intimate. Like I've been thinking about friendship and technology too, that like technology is made to seem so dependent, but also like there's a friendliness, I think that's, mar that's marketed towards like how we use our phones or different social media platforms um, that masks a lot of the more nefarious agendas <laughs> at stake. <laughs> It'd be interesting yeah. to see where you go with this project. Mm. You know the next step for this project um especially when we're in this sort of hybrid world of uh, working from home and you know going to the office if you want to sort of thing right yeah yeah it's a different work terrain for sure so i think i'm processing how like if i go forward in this these sort of ideas like it's definitely going to be different work for sure. And just one stray thought is, you know, what happens to that beautiful Amazon headquarters if people are working from home semi-permanently? Does it become just sort of, uh, I don't know, this forgotten relic of, you know, 2020 or <laughs> what happens to this building? Yeah, I know. It's such a, like, there's so much maintenance involved. I mean, I think there's like a, there's full-time gardening staff, like all of like, there's still so much just labor inherent in the upkeep of that kind of environment. I'm not sure. Oh, Marie. Oh, oh so, 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 sorry. I, I get the train. Ooh. It's so funny, our time differences are perfect that I'm usually having coffee and Marie's usually having wine. <laughs> because of the timing, you know. I know, oh, I know, I'd be having wine. Yeah, but uh, actually, thank you, for, uh, Emily, for that. I, I'm just thinking that it's really connected with this corona of things. 
actually it was before I know, but you know, the, we talked about it with Emily, but um, a lot of people um, are interested through the pandemic in flowers and uh, uh, to take flowers in their houses and make this uh, gardens um, flowers wall. And so it's really, really, really interesting. Mm. Also. I have yeah, to send you guys some photos of my plants. They've done Ooh. really well during the pandemic. Have you taken up like they, gardening or has it, it's just, they just um, thrive because of your extra I care? Think extra care. I check in on them yeah. frequently. Whereas yeah. before they were just sort of existing through neglect. Yeah, they're <laughs> like, I, yeah, I call them my coworkers, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I could I could show you some of my um, yeah. things, but um, um, I was thinking what what could I show you? And I think that the the best for me is just to show the the most recent things which I which I create right now because um, I hate all my uh, past projects. <laughs> it's impossible for me to talk about it. So during the Corona I mean, or this pandemic situation, I'm um, like but for the first i'm like the video maker and now i'm working on a fairy tale which will be a musical much more and we we do it with my uh, production team in a more like a uh, movie way it's not an art it will be a movie for for tv but uh, i will share the screen and i will i will, I will tell oh, you yeah something. let me make sure i'm yeah yeah, you... yeah. cool cool hmm. so I have, yeah, it's prepared, it's not, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so uh, during this corona, um, I was starting to draw. Uh, I make a digital drawings, but <laughs> I realized that I really need to draw a vagina. <laughs> so I created a vagina monster and it's, um, it's really, it's just nothing. It's, uh, I started to do it just by myself, just, just for nothing but now it seems that uh, it's quite popular a lot of my friends wanted to, to this uh, themes uh, to have on their skin so it will be tattoos uh, some of them but uh, then I realized that I, it's re really a process of emancipation for me to doing uh, such a <laughs> such a body things uh, so I create uh, something um, this is, for for example, also <laughs> some holes in, in a body. Yeah. And um, this, uh, those, uh, those drawings are um, how to say uh, some basis for uh, for my, my animation, which I use in uh, my rap music videos, which I create for one exhibition. Uh, and so, so it will be uh, so it's basis for my. Uh, yeah, for, for my uh, music clips, maybe. Uh, yeah, for in my in my work at all, it's really important to uh, draw um, draw hands and eyes because it's really I don't know um, how to describe it, but it's really <laughs> um, important for for me in this multimedia way because uh, it's the, the the touches and the fingers and the eyes which uh, which develops uh, in our bodies through the through the technique uh, in this technical way. I don't know if I could <laughs> describe it um, as good as I think about it, but uh, I mean that the development of, uh, of a technique is, uh, is higher and higher and our bodies are not so able to develop itself uh, in this way. So um, I think, uh, I just thinking how our eyes and uh, fingers looks like, uh, will look in maybe hundreds of years. So it's just, why I uh, why I draw uh, eyes and fingers, yeah. And now I, I I would like to show you one of my rap uh, rap video, but I'm sorry it's not uh, with subtitles, so I prepared uh, the tr translation here. <laughs> I will I will try to uh, scroll down. Yeah, and if you don't mind, it's just for two minutes, so I, I will I will. Um, play it but I have to disable my you have to say me if if you if you could hear it yeah I can. yeah it's okay yeah. okay so I, I will I will 
Sorry for uh, for the for bad translation. I don't have subtitles yet, but uh, yeah, I'm just I, I just want to show you um, how I work now because uh, it's really important for drawing uh, to me. To, to, uh, it's really important to draw for me right now, and I'm also doing this animation and uh, rap. And I I use like um, because in Czech rap scene there's no uh, no woman, woman at all, maybe one or two. It's really strange, but uh, and it's really masculine. This uh, this rap, maybe it's everywhere. But uh, I use in my in my text or in my lyrics just uh, just turn the position because um, those boys t uh, tell that um, uh, come baby and suck my dick. And uh, in my lyrics, it's oh come boy, I will suck your dick. <laughs> and it's really uh, it's I think it's really powerful for me. Oh, cause the object uh, turns to subject right now uh, in this. So, yeah, so I'm just um, a feminist <laughs> uh, at all. Yeah. Okay. Have you um, followed um, Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I, I really like those uh, those girls. But you know, it's uh, I think we have super different position because. Uh, this European East <laughs> or Middle East uh, country has uh, no such a such a good um, basis, and uh, you know, rap rap uh, uh, is uh, like export thing, <laughs> not import. So uh, no, it's uh, no no, it's import thing. It's not export. Sorry, yeah. So so that's the and it's a super male thing. So, so with the video, what happens next with the video? Um, how can people see it? And um, are you interested like you, in showing it in like a gallery context or more? You mean past context? Mm -hmm. You mean what fairy tale or what? Uh, yeah, the fairy tale will be just for uh, just for TVs and for for cinemas. So. Um, I realized that it's uh, impossible for me to create these huge videos, which I made before, into galleries because uh, th those videos are maybe 20 minutes long and it's super, uh, super hard to understand and you have to sit and see and be there in a gallery for 20 minutes and it's, it's, it's okay, but I, um, it's important for me to speak to the people and say them something and it's uh, better to choose some way um, 
which is more mainstream like the yeah if um, you understand and this video clips uh, on the other hand is really uh, usable for for galleries because uh, it goes around and round and round in this gallery space and if there's someone who is in gallery space and spend there maybe 20 hours my song is absolute in their minds because i'm <laughs> you know and they, they go out of gallery and like a summer, uh, like a summer, <laughs> and it's and I said, okay, I'm in. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, I just um, work with uh, with this uh, draw visuality, which I trying to make uh, this um, feminist uh, pictures or, or uh, pictures of uh, emancipation, for example. Now it's pornography much more, but <laughs> before uh, it was uh, it was um, hardly connected with uh, women and uh, some maybe cyber feminism because I um, draw uh, witch witches which are in heliport and make uh, make uh, some magic in heliport, you know, and also the the, the witch which is uh, also octopus and uh, she 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 had uh, drones and uh, you know so uh, th those. Those was uh, my um, my drawings, but now it's pornography, so I don't know why, why pandemic uh, doing this to me. But uh, yeah, tell me more uh, about what you said earlier about eyes and fingers, mm -hmm. and you mentioned like what are they going to look like a hundred years from now? Um, I, I have no idea. I think that they will be huge <laughs> and maybe a different shape or maybe we will be blind because uh, the technique, it's, you know, it's really strange because the, uh, the, res the res resolution is higher and higher and it's, it's double and double, you know, 4K, uh, 4K, 8, 8K, 16K and our eyes are not even possible to see the picture which technology showing us and you know so so it's um, it's really uh it's really scary it's it's really scary scaring me and now here is a new technology i, I don't know maybe you heard about this uh, it's called volume and it uh, it's it's created by lucas film uh, and the new mandalorian was uh, film in it and it's a huge arena of led panels and uh, i don't know did, did you hear about it i don't know yeah. There's something we should already know, and it's a huge arena about uh, from LED panels, and you know it's a uh, uh, it's instead of this green screen, you know it's better than green screen because the actors actually uh, play their roles uh, in this arena, and the three D area is uh, is in the LED panels, and it's um, connected by the camera uh, camera which uh, which. Um, which, <laughs> which make uh, for, um, the movie. And uh, it's connect and if camera just uh, make a different shape, the, the, um, the background also change. So it uh, look like uh, reality. And also the filmmakers in this arena talk that they, they are like in reality. So it's important to me how the technology could show the pictures to us and how we could, um, react on it so yeah that's the reason why i'm doing this pornography eyes and fingers <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah no. All these technologies do we actually want to ever leave our homes like yeah, we could be so. perfectly fine with our like virtual realities in our homes and working from home with our yeah. plans of course yeah yeah, yeah. i so think maybe that's so strong marie though like the um yeah, like we talked a few weeks ago about like the fragments in your drawings that like the fragmented body parts that are usually the fingers and the eyes and the vaginas, but like you only just see parts of the body. Mm -hmm. But I think especially the fingers and the eyes are like, right, like they're sort of our overdeveloped senses right now. Yeah, all of these fingers that come up in your work, I find really striking and like, it's like more powerful than seeing a fist maybe like just seeing like a finger has so much power mm -hmm. <laughs> like it has just as much power as like a punch um mm -hmm. I find that really striking and just yeah the eye like I always that always makes me think of like yeah different modes of surveillance and screen time and just like the constant all-seeing eye that relates I guess in, in certain ways to like religion but now is just our everyday life right we're just mm -hmm. like constantly 
see, being observed and observing like in a constant loop. Yeah, I and I like seeing your video again because I had watched it earlier on, but like it's very catchy. <laughs> like I, I recognize the melody now like, and I'm like, I oh yeah. <laughs> <the lyrics. laughs> yeah, yeah, it has to be this. Yeah, I don't know how to say in English, but we take we say something like a brain dwarf or something, you know, like a brain. Oh, yeah, like an earworm. Uh, earworm. Yeah, yeah, earworm. Yeah, yeah. earworm. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's. But, yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead, I, Melinda. I, I, I'm I'm curious about um, your process in making the video. I I understand that uh, you started with drawings, um, but for the video. Did you start with the animations and then the music or was it all sort of combined and oh. intertwined? No, no, it's just that I'm thinking, what should I do? <laughs> then I realized that my only topic is money and cash <laughs> because I know, you know, it's a, and it's, uh, so I'm trying to uh, find somebody who could meet, could make a beat for me, uh, like a written like beat, like usual beat. And the beat maker is my, my boyfriend, <laughs> um, on, um, often, really often. So he creates uh, something, some tones for me. And then I realized I, I just um, trying to make some sketches. And after I have a beat, then I create the lyrics to the beat. And then I starting to uh, starting to draw because it's really important. I don't want to make an illustration for the voice, but it's really important for me to do it together. And um, there's one thing because I cannot hear the music. I'm super unmusician. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah. So I get inspired from the tones and then I create uh, uh, the pictures, but uh, for the, uh, at the at the beginning, I have the theme, the topic, the topic about the uh, about markets and about uh, the the debt, uh, for example, for now. <laughs> yeah. So I see I see the common thread for both of your work around technology, um, yeah. and um, I, you know, um, tell me about you know how this residency has maybe informed each of your practices and having those conversations between the two of you have maybe uh, informed what you're doing around um, examining technology and its impact on us. I, I've been taking it as a, like a whole process based work itself, the residency, which involves these um, weekly conversations with Marie and bouncing around ideas. Um, and I've obviously never collaborated with someone in this particular form, which is so like constraining in a lot of ways, right? Cause we're like not ever in the same room together. I mean, we're in the same Zoom room together, <laughs> but we sort of, yeah, created like our, I guess our own um, space there. But yeah, I think, I think it's just been like a really interesting process like the conversations and also sharing our older work and then like slowly trying to see like okay like where could we take it together and like sometimes it's just talking about like a common interest like I don't know how we started talking about ASMR videos like it was probably about talking about sound right and I and then I think you brought up those but like I just on a personal level find those like incredibly soothing and watch a lot of them and um I do think that there's something interesting that can be thought about there like that can make its way into some kind of sound work because I think of like the I've been thinking about intimacy and technology a lot during this residency because I am collaborating with Marie and because we're having to use this very specific platform and um, we're trying to like build intimacy without like knowing each other in the same space. And I don't know, I have a lot of like, that's sort of been floating around in my mind a lot of it, uh, a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I'm still sort of in the process of it. I don't know, we're not, I guess we're a little more than halfway through, but it just seems to be about like getting to know each other, each other's work and like trusting each other to mm -hmm. just like take steps. 
together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I think it's really, really mm, great uh, for me because, you know, we, we just starting to collaborate and just talk about things and it was really slow, but um, it was <laughs> uh, like fine because um, we rea you know, I realized that our way of thinking is really, not, it's not similar, but it's really friendly. <laughs> friendly. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if, um, you know, because yeah, the, the, the topics and the way of thinking, it's, uh, yeah, it's nice. And uh, we are pretty, it's the, this, this uh, relationship is new and it's really cool that it's new because you could choose what you tell the, to, to Emily or Emily could choose what, what she tell to me. So, and it's really fine. And um, yeah, and those sound thing, uh, it's super intimate because we, yeah, we start like that, that you, Emily, sent me some, some, some sounds um, which were around you yeah. and I send you some, yeah, also the sounds and I started to uh, create some messages uh, sound messages for you and i realized that it's super that we could create those fragments and then maybe we could um, we could build some installation about our you know our, our practice by this um, zoom really strange artwork yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's so strange to i don't know how other people collaborate on zoom or yeah. other teams are i'm certainly they're certainly they're doing it their own way but like it is like such a specific format to be trying to, to like to try to make an object yeah i don't know i think like what we mostly have is like void like we have we know each other's voices we like see each other's small little like rectangular boxes and it's like the conversations that we're having and that's sort of like the material that we're also I don't know, maybe we're, we can use that as material too, but um, I'm finding it difficult to make work right now that's like not about something that I'm going through because I think just because of the pandemic, like I'm finding it hard to think about like an idea that is very different from my direct life experience at this moment. Um, that's just like not happening for me. So, um, so yeah, I've, I'm finding that like if, just starting with like building our friendship or relationship and like sharing is like the basis for our collaboration and like the work, which is still being figured out. Um, Good, yeah. and I, I yeah. hope this collaboration extends past the residency. Um, so as, a, as an outsider looking in um, and having watched the videos that are on the uh, Unmute website, I see so many common themes and um, common threads um, between your bodies of work. So, uh, you know, this partnership made a lot of sense. I don't know who put together, you know, who matched folks up for the residency, but this made a lot it of sense. It was a lottery. Yeah, it was random. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was yeah. lottery. Like, I think they literally pulled names out of the hat. <laughs> well, <good. laughs> we got lucky, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. But I, I will go to New York uh, maybe uh, in the summer, so we will definitely really. Meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it for a show or for? Yeah, I don't know for yeah. for what. Maybe just for residency. Um, uh, but I don't know. The... <laughs> yeah, but I will. I will definitely come. Maybe on summer or in uh, September. I will let you know. Definitely. Wow. <laughs> Great! I can invite you to this room. <laughs> I'd like to see it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little too meta. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, keep me posted as well. I'm um, curating an exhibition that's going to open the first week of August and go through oh. the end of October. Cool, cool. cool. I will definitely, yeah. definitely come. Marie, are you also um, pursuing this line of examining oh. ASMR? And, and doing, you know, continuing with the theme of ASMR. Oh, just for Emily, just for Emily. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It's become such a phenomenon when again, it yeah. was like something niche um, not so long ago. Um, yeah, some my, of the videos yeah. are really uh, quite the production with 
very high production values and like actual plots to the like acted out scenarios. Really interesting. Yeah, I think Marie, you were talking about one that's like, is it like astrology based? The ASM? Yeah, the astro- yeah, 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 yeah. I'm super in it right now, um, these days. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's the one one uh, magician girl who just said that uh, not not yeah astrology and the tarot cards and oh, okay. she, she just um, yeah make the tarot cards for uh, this astrologic signs. Can but I, I didn't check. Can I find it's, it on YouTube? Yeah, what it looks yeah. like and what it sounds like. But it's in Czech language, so but, but definitely there's something like the like it in English. But this girl is super super beautiful, and yeah, I love her. I just sleep every night with her <laughs> voice and with her, with her videos. Yeah. But I love how like with the ASMR combined with astrology, it's all about yeah. like letting somehow like letting go of control or something, and like with we talked about astrology becoming such a phenomenon um in recently and like why is it so comforting that like someone else can tell you what's going to happen with your life like do you think there's something I think there's something there like maybe an absence of religion but this this in some way makes you feel like okay someone's in control like I have some fate like even if it's just sort of mostly entertainment value, there's something very comforting, or I think that's why people are drawn to it because you're not um, like there's maybe like something to follow. Like someone has told you something will happen, so you're not like caught off guard. Yeah, I never thought about it that way um, as as seeking comfort. Yeah. yeah, I think so, or like something about control or. Definitely religion. I think definitely like it's a. I think it's target. Yeah, maybe maybe that's also the reason why it's uh, the, the technologies are around us and th- there's so much uh, IT and everything and the the science is so high and we are not able to uh, understand the process of uh, of how this works and so so maybe the reason is also that we, we need something magic we could mm. we, we trust because there's this iPhone and I have no idea how it works or how it could send me the message or the picture and all. And you know, that's maybe the, that's the reason why people could just choose the, the magic and the astrology and those things. And I also think that the, those, um, those predictions say just what you want to hear. You know, you, ju- you just choose the, uh, the fragments and use them. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense that we need something, right? We're so inundated with information or logic or like, I don't know, scientific knowledge that there's something we still want to have something that we don't quite understand around us. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. I want to send you an ASMR message, um, Marie. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do one. We'll see. Cool, cool, cool. (laughs) Maybe I'll read your horoscope. (laughs) Super. <laughs> but keep me posted on what you are doing with the residency and also your um, what you're working on in your studios. Definitely. Yeah, this was really great. It was really nice to share, share so in progress good. ideas with you. So good to meet you both. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad to do this. Me too. Yeah. Thank you for joining. Well, have a good rest of your day and night. Yeah. Sorry. Have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You too. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Take care.